quick run through then of rectification from AC into DC uh, diodes and how they work, capacitors how they work and how we can actually smooth um, our rectified current. So starting with AC then you need to know the voltage time graph for AC looks something like this, positive followed by negative followed by positive negative and then positive again. So AC means alternating current. This is AC. And this is this one, AC voltage versus time. And if we want to rectify that, okay, it means change it into just DC, just one direction, one direction. So AC into DC. And what we do is we use something called a diode. This is the symbol for a diode in a circuit. It looks a little bit like a play symbol, and I always remember it, the current will play in the direction of the play, but it will pause in the direction of the pause sign. Okay, So the diode only works in one direction. So what you end up with is, just like the previous graph, the positive is OK, positive goes through, but the diode stops the current from flowing in the negative direction. The positive goes through, goes through the diode in the positive direction. But again, it stops the current in the negative direction. Positive is OK, positive goes through, negative does not. So you actually end up with a graph like that. And that is called half wave rectification, half wave rectification. So, well, the AC was a full wave and this is a half a wave rectified so half the wave is rectified to be positive now you have a DC it's direct it's always going in the positive direction this is the positive voltage direction you need to know just a little bit about how that diode works well a diode is a little bit like the um, uh, solar cell from one of your previous topics okay it has made of two types of silicon it looks something like that in reality it's got an n type you may remember the n type meant it was negative and a p type and you may remember the p type is a positive meaning there's loads of extra electrons in the n type not very many p um, uh, electrons in the p type hence positive Okay, and it just means that, just like that symbol, the positive current will only flow in this direction. There's a junction in between, like, which is called a depletion layer, which, which the um, voltage has to actually overcome before you get a current. You do need to recognise, you definitely need to know this, uh, the current voltage graph for a diode. Well, remember we said there's current only flowing if the voltage is positive, current will not flow in the negative direction. Well, certainly not very much current will flow in the negative direction, so it's a very, very, very uh, shallow gradient line like this. Okay, and then as it passes zero, it becomes positive. It still goes up as a shallow gradient until we overcome that depletion layer, and then we suddenly get quite a large current flowing in the positive direction. Just important to note with this graph, You've got no current in the negative direction. And you've only got positive current flowing in the positive direction. So that was um, current versus voltage for a diode. Um, and what we want to move on to now is full wave rectification. So how do we actually take that AC line and actually rectify it fully? So that means we don't want to just have positives and no negatives. What we want to have is always positive we want to take the whole ac wave that i've got here and we want to have positive then positive then positive 
that makes sense? Always a positive current, no kind of points at which we haven't got any current. So this is going to be full wave rectification. What we actually use is something called a bridge rectifier. It's something that uses diodes, but it uses it with a, with a bridge, and it actually rectifies the entire wave. So bear with. Um, here is the, the circuit for it. These are the input terminals here, let's say in. And here is the output. So this is our AC that's going to come in. In other words, this one turns from positive to negative, and this one goes from negative to positive. When this one's positive, that one's negative. When this one's positive, that one's negative. And here, this one we want always to be positive, and this one we want always to be negative. In other words, this is going to be our DC, our direct current output. So let's just trace a little bit of positivity, and I'll do the positivity red. And so this one's positive first. Along it goes to the bridge rectifier, and it will not go in this direction. It won't go through this diode, but it will go through this diode. So this terminal is therefore positive. Okay, now, whilst that's been happening, this one down here has been negative. Well, along it goes to the rectifier circuit, and it will not go through the play side because it's negative. It will go sort of backwards, if you like, through the negative side. So it will come out over the bridge and to the negative output. Then the terminals flip, and this one down here which was negative is now positive. It goes along to the rectifier circuit and now it will only go through the play symbol, meaning this one is still a positive terminal. And similarly, just the inverse again, this one is negative, it goes to the rectifier circuit, will not go in the positive direction through the, uh, the diode there comes down here and joins the so this one over the bridge and to the negative terminal. So we've rectified always, no matter you know, which part of the cycle it's on, this side here will always be a positive and this side down here will always be a negative. That's quite a tricky diagram, but actually when you work through it step by step and just remember your rules, Positive goes in the direction of the play, negative goes in the opposite direction. I would suggest just work with the positives, really, when you're trying to figure out that question to uh, work out what you're looking at. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is capacitors. So now we have our fully rectified DC. We've got always positive, never zero, always positive. Um, but we still have this kind of bumpy high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low voltage, and we don't really want that. So we actually use something called a capacitor to actually smooth out that DC electricity there. Uh, and you're going to need to know how one works. Well, basically, a capacitor, um, and this is the symbol for it, by the way, it has a symbol, looks a little bit like a cell, but there are two equal length parts. What it is, is two plates that are like separated by a small gap. And in that separation, um, you can build up a charge. So what I'm going to do firstly is connect it with a power supply. It doesn't really matter what value this power supply is, but this side of the power supply is positive, you know, and this side is negative. So it charges the capacitor positive and then negative. Okay, now actually what I'm going to do is put a switch in this circuit here because now I'm going to open that switch and I'll stop charging that capacitor up. Now what I could do is I could connect another circuit around here. Let's put a bulb in there just for the demonstration. And what you would see is now this capacitor would discharge. Its charge would flow back around the circuit and light the lamp and it would do that for a certain amount of time until the lamp eventually goes out. It's actually how the lamp in your car works when you, you've turned it off at night, turn the engine off, 
close the door, the lamp turns on, and then gradually it fades out. Well, that's it's used as a capacitor. So by controlling, if I put a switch in this circuit as well down here, by controlling which switch is open, which one is closed, you can either charge up the capacitor by closing this one or discharge it by closing this one. So that's how it works. Well, you need to also, you can see down there, five and six is for charging and discharging. So this first line is what does that look, what is a voltage versus time graph for charging a capacitor? Well, it starts off at zero volts and over time it charges up very rapidly at first and then gradually and eventually reaches its maximum charge depending on the capacitance of the capacitor which is a new um, word for you uh, but you don't need to know too much about that how much charge can it actually store okay each one has a kind of limit uh, and then if you then close the other switch and leave the charge in one open then you get it, what's called a discharge curve. So that is the last one. You just need to be aware of the discharge curve, really. It doesn't discharge linearly. It doesn't fall at the same rate all the time. It discharges very rapidly at first and then less rapidly as the charge kind of dissipates. So the, the voltage from it is higher first and then gradually it goes. And that's that kind of gentle... Um, fading out of that light that uh, I was talking about from your car. So what does that do when we put it into a circuit with our newly fully rectified DC? Well, if we put a little capacitor in, what will happen is as it, it increases, it charges the capacitor, then the, vo the voltage from the AC generator falls and the capacitor just gradually discharges then charges up a little bit more, capacitor gradually discharges, charged up a little bit more, discharges, charged up a little more and discharges. And so you get this kind of smoothed output where if I delete the oh, kind of working lines, if you like, you now see we get a much more constant always positive, always direct current, but now not that bumpy line, or not so bumpy, I should perhaps say. A smoothed output DC, very good for running our computers or anything like that. Okay, well, I hope that helped you guys with your um, charging topic. Best of luck with the exams, guys.